Will the latest autopilot version for Tesla finally catch up to the original 1.0 version? I think I think it's just about to. It looks like Electrek is uh, reporting that from the some inside sources. Uh, they found out that uh, it is in the latest version, in the latest stages of the uh, beta testing. So that means that usually they roll it out relatively fast within a couple of weeks but let, let's just back up a little bit as you know that right now tesla is on 2.5 version for the autopilot and yet it is still not up to par it doesn't have the same features as the original 1.2 version that came out a couple of weeks back a couple of weeks couple of years back and you know this has been my biggest criticism of tesla because you know when you create a newer software or newer versions or models of your product, eh, things need to be better. Now, the problem was that the original version was created by Mobileye that has now been purchased by Intel and uh, Tesla had a bit of a breakup with them and they decided to develop their own version, but they just couldn't catch up. Uh, up until pretty much now, some of the features were behind. They were finally catching up with them one by one. Now, Elon did you know, have a little bit of a Twitter storm in January promising all of this exciting new features features on top of what was supposed to happen when they finally catch up. Now, it doesn't look like those features are going to be making into this update, but the two, the most important ones that it looks like you're going to make it is, is are the ones that are going to catch it up with 1.0. And they are, one is finally uh, this version is going to see the cars and motorcycles and trucks that are in the lane next to you. That's not there right now and it is in my 1.0 version. Uh, and the second one is I think the car is going to be a little bit more stable, uh, much more stable. Uh, within the lane as it sees the lanes and the, and, and, and the lane that the car is in instead of kind of a going left and right a little bit a lot of people have been reporting that even though Elon said it was pretty smooth but some people were not unhappy it looks like they're going to make uh, an adjustment to that so that's some really good news I'm definitely going to uh, report on this as soon as it starts getting rolled out um, again I don't have 2.5 but I'm sure there will be a lot of people who will help us out with that information all right before we move on to another Tesla exciting Tesla news, uh, let me remind you that this uh, this stream and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. And there is a, a discount co coupon code in the description of this video that they've created specifically for us. All right, let's move on to the next one. And Tesla is rolling out a new uh, program uh, for workplace charging. Now, as you know, Tesla has a supercharging network, which is, you know, fast charging network, which is pretty much their best feature the best uh, uh, the, the biggest thing that uh, differentiates them from the uh, other car makers but they've also started rolling out destination chargers um, and uh, a few other and and few other programs that they had where they kind of pay for the installation for the chargers in the places where they install it at whether parking lots or hotels uh, pay for the electricity so that's how it's been working and pretty much modeling after that they are now approaching or letting other companies approach them in where they'll be installing these charging stations at those companies. Now, I have to say this is pretty good because um, a company that I work for right now, the Fortune 100 company, and other few other ones that I worked in the past or visited campuses here, they have charging stations, but a lot of them are, you know, sometimes they're paid. Like right now, uh, we have a charge point that's paid and it's pretty expensive. Um, and even if it was for free, the problem is, is that, you know, all kinds of Priuses and Nissan Leafs and in other cars with a small range, they have to charge there. So a lot of times they make sure they come early because that's like their life depends on them uh, and they get and they get all available uh, chargers or a lot of times they implement like um four hour charging window. So now you have to be on schedule of everybody else. And if you didn't get into one window, you need uh, to get into like the next shift. Then it becomes kind of a project that you have to go through every day. Now, if these uh, uh, chargers like this one, actually in the picture, that's actually my charger, a picture of my charger in my garage, uh, in my apartment complex garage. So if you actually uh, go with that, you will have Tesla charging, you know, Tesla's charging and kind of a separate set, separate part of the parking lot a separate set of chargers than everybody else and hopefully there will be no problem with having to do shifts and so forth um you can start and stop remotely you can unplug the car so it's i i think this is great and i really hope uh this is going to be yet another sort of solution for those uh, people who live in apartment complexes get a model 3 maybe and then have to charge somewhere of course if you change jobs then you have to kind of start this project all over again uh so that's that's that um 
Let's see, Cormac uh, Sheehan in a chat room says, what's your take on a wireless charging? Well, wireless charging is not efficient. So if you want fast charging, wireless charging is probably not the way to go. It's convenient, but to be honest with you, how hard is this to just plug the car in and then unplug it when you need to use it? It takes like total seven seconds for me, really. I mean, it's cool, but I, I don't think it's going to be here anytime soon because there's so much energy loss. So you also end up uh, uh, losing a, a lot of uh, electricity. Uh, let's see. Um, oh yeah, Bruno Alves says, hi Alex, I ordered my Model 3 yesterday. Congratulations, let us know when you get it. Let's move on to another story, but before that, of course, guys, if you're enjoying this feed, by the way, sorry I had to be an hour late. You know, some I, I tried to notify as many people as I could. Um, anyway, but if you're enjoying this anyway, and if you're enjoying this channel, please give it some thumbs up. It usually helps uh, the video do well in during the replay. All right, another news about Tesla semi truck is coming from DHL. One of their executives was being interviewed. I forget by which outlet, but uh, they were basically praising Tesla uh, semi trucks, and they were saying how they uh, they have ordered a few to test them out, but they believe if everything goes the way they uh, they and Tesla believe uh, things are going to go, they're actually going to be able to save a lot of money. As a matter of fact, they're saying within the first uh, two years, on the first two years, they're going to make up the difference uh, between the cost of the Tesla semi truck and a, a semi truck, a regular semi truck. And after that, obviously, it's going to be all about uh, the savings on top of that. So he was praising it. And it, you know, it comes from DHL. I mean, these guys know a little bit about, you know, semi trucks and the needs that they have. So so this is definitely, definitely good news. Um, let's move on to another one, which is actually something that I didn't realize that Tesla just only now somehow reported their sales in China separately from, um, I, I thought that was part of the, uh, you know, quarterly report. So, I mean, I literally just saw the story. I just wanted to talk about it, but I'm not really sure why it's kind of only today, I guess, or yesterday it came out. But anyway, they said that they doubled uh, their sales in China in 2017 compared in 2016. I believe it was a 1 billion, now it's 2 billion, which is, you know, a lot given that you know, they're getting a lot of competitions there uh, from their from the local companies, from Chinese companies that uh, create electric cars uh, for uh, for their country. And, you know, Tesla has to pay 25 uh, percent of tariff, which is which makes their cars by far more expensive. But nevertheless, it looks like a Model X is actually more popular than Model S. It looks like in China, but they've been kicking butt and we'll see what happens. It looks like they kid a, uh, it looks like they uh, had a little bit of a setback or big setback with the Chinese government on uh, what to do with their upcoming factories. So that's kind of on hold. But nevertheless, looks like you know the price is uh, is still not uh, that big of a difference maker for those people in China who do want this car. Rashim in the chat room says, hope DHL will be able to recover the market loss from Amazon joining the shipping market. Uh, let them battle it out. I mean, pe people will need semi trucks and uh, I hope Tesla will provide them uh, and, and save money to those who do. Uh, let's see, why build a super extensive and ineffective wireless charging station? Ask Saga Photo DE to avoid a 10 seconds for plugging in. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think wireless charging is, you know, unless they somehow have amazing breakthrough and, and, and it's going to be pretty much the same or better rate of charging, which as far as physics are concerned, probably not possible. Um, it, it, it's probably just going to be a novelty for now. Um, all right, guys, by the way, I just wanted to thank all of my Patreons who contribute to the show. That way I can travel and do a lot of things and buy equipment. And of course, for that, I provide some exclusive footage, bloopers and behind the scene materials. So if you're interested in supporting the show, please browse to the link uh, in the description of this video. OK, let's get to it. And we're going to feature, uh, uh, of course, my favorite part of the show, comment of the day. Now, comment of the day actually comes from uh, somebody who uh, posts a lot in a, in a comment section, uh, uh, the username in my honest opinion. And uh, he posts so much, I, I'm, I'm considering uh, having him pay, pay rent in my comment section. But nevertheless, I am a chose, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, a topic yesterday as the Model 3 is now um, uh, being configured by non first non-Tesla non -Tesla owners, which is exciting. And uh, um, he correctly says, I think Tesla is not sending emails to everybody who can configure. Most I hear is about people who just logged into their accounts and checked uh, configure and 
uh, found out that they're able to. Yeah, that's correct. And I probably, I don't know if I should make a co co correction because I, from what I understand, some people are getting their configuration emails, but a lot of them are reporting that they never got a configuration email. They just kind of logged in to check on this and they end up saying, oh my God, I can configure my Model 3 now. So, you know, another weird thing, right? Because I would think that, you know, Tesla would be pushing those emails out. I don't know, maybe more going out uh, today, but that would be kind of weird that this is something that people kind of have to find out on their own. Um, uh, IMHO also is in my humble opinion. Yeah, I actually, I should probably ask him if it's in my honest opinion or in my humble opinion, but nevertheless, IMHO is uh, his handle and I enjoy having his comments. We don't always agree. As a matter of fact, I think we only agree in half of the cases, but only that only makes uh, this whole conversation even more enjoyable for me. At least we have a real, uh, a real discussion about it. All right, guys, I am, uh, uh, you know, I thought that we wouldn't have as many news today as we had yesterday, but we had uh, just as many. As a matter of fact, a couple of them I'm saving for tomorrow because we have a, 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 a usually, a sh uh, you know, kind of a slow news day on Saturday. So I got a couple other news stories for sure. As a matter of fact, uh, on that, uh, Saturdays after that, I'm thinking about having guests on the show. Let me know in the chat room here and definitely in the comment section if you guys would enjoy seeing some live guests on the show via webcam, Zoom, Skype, or whatever. So I'm just lining them up, but I hope you enjoy that part of the show. All right, it's been fun once again. Sorry for being a little bit late, but just exactly like I said, some circumstances just had to happen. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Other than that, remember to stay charged.